Welcome to Cupcakes with Cal. If you thought last week's guest was good, then we're in for a doozy this week. We have double Ironman World Champion and Australian Marinda Carfrey. Thanks for coming in, Marinda. Thanks for having me. Thanks for slaving over the cupcakes. Appreciate it. Yeah, no problems. I uh, knocked them out pretty quickly today. I've got into a pretty good routine. Yeah, I can imagine. You've uh, probably got it dialed in now. So we're just going to get straight into this and um, just a little bit of background. You actually started off your career playing basketball, right? Mm -hmm. And so, being not the tallest person, you're five foot three inches. Mm -hmm. Have you actually ever touched the hoop? <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I have actually. We won a championship one year, and uh, they brought the ladder out on the court, and I got to cut down the cut down the the netting. Yeah, the netting. So I, I did touch the ring, then I took that opportunity while I was there. Nice. Mm -hmm. So when did you just, when did you sort of figure out that? Team sports was more about high fiving each other and then transition from like a team sport into a triathlon. Um, honestly, um, with Team Serious, there's a lot of high fives, so I feel pretty at home there. Um, you still yeah. manage to maintain that sort of enthusiasm and, um, I guess, American culture. Uh, there's definitely a lot of enthusiasm in the group, which is which is nice. Um, being Australian, it's not really something that comes naturally to me. Um, yeah. Same. I'm picking up what you're putting down. For sure. And so, um, you've, you've got quite an impressive um, Kona record. Some would say it's more impressive than my Nana's Beach Tower collection. You've raced there five times, you've got two gold, two silver and a bronze. That's a pretty darn impressive collection, you know, of medals there. Thanks. So you're heading back to Kona this year as defending champ. Um, how's the build up going? Are you all on track for that? I, I like to hope so. We're six weeks out now. Um, definitely been a different build up to my last five years and as you said they were very successful but um, I decided to add in Challenge Roth this year and um, that meant that my whole preparation was going to be different but um, I really wanted to race that race and race it while I was still able to be competitive over the distance. Um, so yeah, I feel like I'm in good shape. Um, I would be lying if I said I wasn't a little nervous about uh, the different approach to Kona, but um, I'm excited to, to get back there and defend the title. And are you going to use the same formula as you've used in previous years where obviously you know it's worked? Yeah, I mean for sure. Um, at this point I'll be training very similar to what I have in past years. But um, there were some key sessions that had to go away that I normally would have done sort of eight weeks, nine weeks out uh, because I was recovering from Roth. So um, I like to think that I can take, you know, the fitness that I gained from Roth and put that into Kona. But um, again, it's a different formula that, that I've used. Uh, but from now until Kona, certainly the last two weeks will be very similar to what I've done in the last, um, in the last five years. You've obviously got to keep evolving as all the other girls keep stepping up as well. Uh, so how many hours, give or take, are you sort of training each week during your build-up to Kona? Uh, you know, 30 hours a week is probably a typical week if I'm putting in a lot of bike miles and that increases. But uh, I generally sort of am putting in 60 mile, 100, 100 kilometer, we can speak Australian. Yeah. Or nice. Kiwi. <laughs> um, 100k run weeks and sort of 450 to 500 k's on the bike. That's sort of a solid... Um, that's about the top end of what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, and then they're swimming sort of 20 to 25k a week as well. So, and, and do you spend much time in the gym doing strength work or do you find that just dusting your trophy cabinets enough to get uh, you know, enough workout? Well, the, um, the Kona trophy is 40 pounds. So you know I, I can use that one for some bench pressing. I like to take it down off the shelf and put it up on the shelf a few times a week um, or day even, depending on my mood. But um, yeah, that's definitely a good a good way to build strength. I can't relate. <laughs> Maybe someday. <laughs> validation to get to Kona Ironman World Champs. What what's the deal with validation right now? What is it? Um, I think the rule still stands that if you have won Kona, then uh, for the next five years, all you need to do to qualify for the following Kona is finish an Ironman event. Uh, but I believe they're bringing in a clause that says you need to be competitive, whatever that means in yeah, an right. Ironman event. So do you think it's fair, if you're a champion, that you need to go and do another race, 
because um, an Iron Man's obviously pretty taxing. Mm -hmm. Why can't you take your wheelbarrow to Abu Dhabi or Challenge Roth and fill it out with cash and go and try some different races? Uh, my my point exactly. Um, I I think it's quite disrespectful to ask the Kona champion to validate, especially current champion. I think with the new um, five slots being automatically qualified through the four five championship races, but then not having the Kona champ be automatically qualified is is crazy. So. Um, I'm all for having the, the champ be given a, a free ride through through to Kona. I think they've earned that. So there's a set of rules that you just need to finish your race. Um, and there's been a few examples and you're one particular where you've just got through the day and you've not raced it and you actually um, you took the run pretty easy and you're eating a bag of chips. And um, actually we've uh, made a little, a little fuel belt to tribute that. A little cupcakes one. Oh wow. So what we've got, we've got um, a couple of cupcakes just in case, you know, mm -hmm. comforts everything in the marathon. It's a long way, especially if you're going to run a four or five hour marathon. We've got just plain chips and just some jalapenos just in case you need a little bit of a kickstart. Yeah, for sure. I so I'm it. thinking of maybe marketing this. What do you reckon would it take off? <laughs> um, yeah, I think any Kona champion might, uh, might want to try that one out. Uh, I certainly would like to take that one to Florida at the end of this year and, and use it there. I think it'd be a great, um, a great uh, way to get me through that marathon. Um, speaking of which, I've actually heard that you have quite a relaxed diet before races, and you've been known to have cupcakes or brownies the morning of races. Is mm -hmm. that true? Yes, very true. Uh, is there anything else you have besides that, and is that a secret to some success of yours? Um, maybe. Um, I don't have, yeah, I mean, there's nothing else that I have in the morning. I, I choose to have a cupcake or a brownie because it's high in calories and it tastes great. And I, I have trouble getting down toast or oatmeal or anything so early in the morning. So I find that if it's a brownie or a cupcake, then I'm more likely to want to eat it at 4 a.m. in the morning. Cupcakes are easy to eat. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, don't, I definitely know what you mean by that. Getting back to Kona, um, there's a debate at the moment of having 50 men and 50 women What's your take on that? Um, I'm not so... I mean, I'd, I'd like to see equal numbers. Um, I'd like to see those numbers come down from 50 to 40, 40 men and 40 women. Um, I don't believe... I mean, there's only 10 athletes that are getting paid in Kona at the end of the day. I'm not really sure why athletes that are maybe going to place from 30 and below want to be in Kona because it's an expensive trip. Um, and if you want to do it properly, it's certainly an expensive trip, a couple of weeks in Kona, condo, hire car, um, all the rest of it. So I, I don't see why 50 people should be on that start line. Yeah. So I'd like to see 40 and 40 um, in Kona for sure. Cool. Okay, so you're married to another professional triathlete and some would say an all-American superhero, Tim O'Donnell, mm -hmm. uh, commonly known as T.O. Now, do you guys train much together? How does the dynamic work? Yeah, we actually do train a fair amount together. Um, when we get closer to Kona, then uh, training plans get more specific and he'll obviously go up and do more of his own thing and so will I. But um, if it's an easy aerobic ride or an easy aerobic run, then we definitely like to go out and do that together. Does it, does it weigh you down at all when he keeps asking you for run tips? Um, <laughs> No, not at all. I'm happy to help out wherever I can, um, but honestly, I don't think I'll be out splitting him again anytime soon. Did you out split him in the run last year? Yes, I did. Does a does Obamacare cover that heartbreak from that? <laughs> I'm not sure it does, um, but I'll be looking into it. Okay, this is a new segment where we're going to be reading out tweets, and uh, Rennie's going to answer these. Uh, this one's from Lionel. What's the craziest run workout you've done in preparation for Kona? I'm not sure why Lionel wants my advice on running. He's um, clearly yep. the fastest runner in half Ironman right now. So That's Lionel Sanders. Crazy Canadian. Alright, this one's from Richard, uh, New Zealand. What are you running from? Boogeyman. Okay. Uh, this one is from Jason in Australia. Is she a Terminator sent from the future to destroy everyone in triathlon? Girl,
This one is from Dave in Boulder, Colorado. It just says hashtag six times. Six times what? Doesn't ring a bell. Okay, this one is from Tim O'Donnell. Honey, can you pick up Chipotle on the way home? Hashtag daddy bears got to eat. Come on, Tio. Everybody knows that you're the one who takes care of dinner. This one is from uh, Men's Pro Association and it reads, what's the hurry on the run? You're making us look bad. Hashtag relax, hashtag please, hashtag signed everyone. How about hashtag run faster? <laughs> All right, and just to wrap up, um, thanks for coming in today, Rooney. I know you're flat out and you're tired and everyone has got their own agenda at the moment, so I appreciate you coming in. and. My pleasure having a bit of fun with us. Um, so people can follow you on Twitter, follow you on Facebook, as you leave in Tacona. Yeah, um, you can follow me at Marinda Carfre on Twitter. Um, I've also got a Facebook page. I'm not sure how they can find that, but it's on there. Yeah, check out Marinda's um, Twitter. She's pretty much wanting the internet with about 50,000 followers, so she's doing something right. We didn't want her to leave empty-handed today, so we actually bought her um, some wine to take home to her, her hubby, who is a bit of a wine connoisseur. Yep. This is actually a 1980 reserve. We had to pull a fair bit of our money to get this, but um, I'm sure he's going to appreciate it really once it hits your lips. Oh, for sure. Um, it looks delicious. I'm, I'm sure he's going to be pumped when I walk in the door with that. It's got a nice citrus throff as well. Nice. And uh, the good thing about this as well, once you've finished, you've actually got a pillow to sleep on. Perfect, perfect. That'll be prime just during Tio's. Um, the remainder of his block, so thanks for coming in and good luck in Kona, we'll see you over there. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me.